when I had my tongue pierced, I was very perplexed, very disturbed at the idea that I could not address the tongue buildup, you know, because it's the buildup. It was just very, very built. And I, oh God, mm -hmm. to be a teenager, you know, I don't remember how long that was, but it was some time because my friend also got hers done. And the two of us were like, yo, man, can you eat yet? Yo, man, will you hug your tongue, yo? It was the stupidest thing ever. What up, what up, it's your girl, Mena. In this video, we are talking about 10 random facts about your girl. <laughs> Some of these things really should be a story time, but we're gonna do them in this video here and I'll share with you the cliff notes of the actual story. So if you're not already subscribed, do that. Follow me on Instagram, join my text community because it's free and you should be a part. I post videos three times a week, so make sure you turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of those videos, girl. And if you're wondering, this is my basic makeup look, I am going to be doing a video about my jewelry stash, most of which are from Amazon and Target. These earrings are from Target. I'll link it below. This wrap dress is Amazon. I'll link it below too if you're interested in that. The jacket, because I know you're going to ask, this jacket is actually from Fashion Nova. I think it's really cute. I'll link it too. Oh, and I'll link my... <laughs> Girl, we, we just venturing right now. I'm gonna link my jewelry too, because I know y'all gonna ask. All right, so let's go into this video. Number one, I'm from Rhode Island. So if you notice my accent, you know what I'm saying? I talk like this. I say coffee, pop the car. We go to the store, not the store. You know, I have an accent, but you know what I'm saying? I also went to school, so I know how to talk when it's necessary, but I also fall back to my accent because it's my comfort zone. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm from Rhode Island, not to be mistaken, for Long Island. When I first moved to Houston 11 years ago, whenever I would say that I was from Rhode Island, people just could not understand. Long Island off of New York? No. Well, they wouldn't say New York. I said New York. They would say New York? No. Rhode it is the smallest state in the United States. I understand that. Yes, there are black folks in Rhode Island. Please read a book. Okay. So I'm from Rhode Island. I was born and raised. Number two is that I am a Ghanaian. That's how I identify from Ghana. Yes. I was born in the U.S. I suppose you can consider me a Ghanaian American. I am a Ghanaian. Okay. Both of my parents are from Ghana. We are first gen United States citizens. And I was born in Rhode Island. Growing up, my mom talked to us in English and also in Chi. So I speak Chi, but my Chi is not fluent. It is a step underneath intermediate. Okay, whatever it is, I can get around. I can maneuver. I can understand it like 95%. I can speak it <laughs> maybe like 55%. You know what I'm saying? I can maneuver. It wasn't until what going into college, grad school, where I was like, you know what? I really want to be able to speak my language because I don't want to be among my people and be standing here like the Obruni. I want to be able to get along and communicate and banter a little bit. You know, all of the things. I just didn't want to be an outsider. Not to mention going home already is written all over me, Obruni Mate. But I want to also be able to speak when I need to. Some stuff ain't going to be right, but you're going to get what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So all of it is just all wrapped in a bow. You know, when I talk, it's a whole, a whole lot of accents. And if you've been here for a while, you know I have a whole lot of accents. It's all mosh posh. It's all a salad bowl. You know what I'm saying? It's like a pasta. <laughs> Seafood pasta with all the seafood inside. You know what I'm saying? Number three is that I'm a first gen grad from college. No one that I know of in my family has gone to college. So going to college was really scary for me. I thought I couldn't make it. It was, I just had this defeated mindset. It was just really strange, but I'm so glad that I got the help that I needed to go to college through high school. And I did not want to travel to a different school out of state because I was already afraid about going to college in the first place. Like, am I gonna even do well, girl, please? Like, my SAT, stop, you see? I was just like, no, there's just no way. So going to college and the whole idea behind it was so scary. Even when I was in college, I thought I was gonna fail out. It was really terrifying for me, but I did it. By the grace of God, thank the Lord I made it through. And I'm so proud of myself because it paved the way for my sister who's younger than me, who went to college as well, hello? Now, number four is that I'm also a first gen graduate of graduate school. That's huge. That is huge. Fear took me all along the way, but so with me also was the Lord, honestly, because even in that, I was afraid. I actually sat for the G, is it the GMAT? Yeah, the GMAT is for business. I'm going to get my MBA. And I was so terrified. I bombed the whole thing. I had skipped a whole section thinking it was just the preliminary questions. I was just so afraid. And once I had skipped that whole section accidentally, I was like, that's it. The whole thing is in the trash. Forget it. So I just gave up and it was what it was. I worked for a year and realized that I actually wanted to do something different. So my undergrad degree is in business administration. My graduate degree is in higher education administration. In our school, it was called college student personnel. The term that is more largely understood is higher education administration. So I was an administrator. 
administrator in higher education, in colleges and universities. And then I had transitioned to high schools and now I'm an entrepreneur. So it's so funny how things went and did a 360. I never imagined I'd be where I am right now. I literally went in a circle. So I started off a business, transitioned to education and came right back to business with my own business. So you would think that I'm not using my degrees, but I am, you know what I'm saying? I am and I'm so, so happy how everything turned around. Number five, girl. Your girl was an actress or whatever. So when I was young, oh my God, how old was I? I don't even know. My mom was working and she saw a flyer of some sort that La Amistad was going to be filmed in portion in Newport, Rhode Island. So she told all of us, we were like, what? Yes, take us, Ma. So we went mad early to the location and we interviewed. I don't believe we had to do much for the interview. And then I was the only one out of my siblings who got chosen, honey. I was like, praise him because he knows I'm a star. Like, so I, I made it, you know what I'm saying? And I forget, I think I was just there for a few days. I was young. I was maybe nine or 10. I was really young. I don't know. I recall very vividly the trailer they had me in. I remember seeing Debbie Allen's trailer, Morgan Freeman's trailer. I was like, yo, we in the big leagues. We in the big, <laughs> it was a whole thing. I was excited. I was a lot lighter before I came to Houston because I wasn't living in all this sun. They put makeup on me to be darker. I remember there was a little boy. They put extra hair on his hairline to make it look more disheveled. And he was crying whenever they would take it off. We were there for maybe three days. So he, they had to do the same thing every single day. They put pilgrimage clothes on us. I have pictures, I don't know where they are. Back in the day, you didn't have USB, SD cards and stuff. So I don't know what those pictures are. But I was in Amistad Joe and I was in the courtroom scene, you dig? And I did not know what I was doing. I was so perplexed. I, I Now I look back, I've always been a highly conscientious person. I need rules and order and all of that. So I was just like, what am I doing? Can I get clear direction? No. There was no clear direction. They just sat me in the courtroom among a whole bunch of other people. There was a court scene going on. I did not understand what was going on. So this lady next to me, this white woman next to me, I said to her, am I supposed to do something? Am I supposed to say something? And she said, I never forget. She said, just look like you don't understand what they're saying. And in fact, I did not understand what they were saying. <laughs> I was young and no one told me really what this was about. I knew the movie was about slavery, but I was like, I don't really get it. And obviously, we, what was being shot in Newport was a segment of the movie. So I didn't see a lot of other things. And so I was just like, I really don't understand. So as they were talking and litigating, I was just like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. No one told me anything. I was like, what is this? I know I'm an extra, but dang, at least like, give me a little VIP treatment. Like do a little something for the kids. Dang, don't be acting so dry and stingy. You know I'm a star. <laughs> Hi, you know? So that was my extra debut. I got paid, I think it was real small, but to me, as a 10, 11 year old, I was like, what, this is dope, man. I forget what it was. It was a few hundred dollars, you know what I'm saying? It was, and I remember they had lunch for us. It was about three days. My mom took me each day to go. She was so excited for me. And one of the times we were walking downstairs from the courthouse scene room, down the stairs, and we ran into Morgan Freeman and took a picture with him, but you know back in the day it was those plastic cameras. You had go printed at CVS, so I don't know what those pictures are, but we blew it up and we got a signature and then also to be Allen. Yo, we, we was so Suit. We were like, yo, this is the big leagues. You know what I'm saying? We in a big mood. Like we've made it. You see what I'm saying? I don't know where that stuff is at. It was so fun though to just, and even now to just recall it. So when the movie came out, then we went to go see it and I remember we were like, oh, this movie is graphic. We watched the movie in theaters. It was horrifying to say the least. When it came to my scene, however, I remember where I was and we were glued to the movie screen. Like, where are we gonna see her? Where are we gonna see her? And I remember seeing myself now. This was. 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. So now if I were to watch the movie, man, my face would be, I, I can see myself in the costume and I know my face was so baby face that I would have to really stare to find myself. But I was up in there, girl. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have my rates back then, but that's okay. Your girl was doing a little something on a TV screen. And that, lo and behold, was the first of many. Cause if you've been around, you already know. If you see my Samora commercial on a YouTube street, then you already know what it is <laughs> oh my gosh number six is so to me you know <laughs> 
to me, it's like off brand, like really badly. So I was a teenager. I believe I was, I know, I know. I was really turned as a teenager, okay? The Lord has done a work in my life, amen? I had a tongue ring, you know, I may have been 16, yep. And it was the hot thing to do, yo. I was a hot girl before hot girls even knew they were hot girls. You understand what I'm saying? And me and my girlfriend went and got a tongue, Jesus, limb of God, when I think about that, Lion of Judah, it, wow. I mean, I remember sitting in the, the tattoo parlor and you stick your tongue out and I still have the hole. Okay, so let me show you the hole where the exit, well, they entered through this way, but you put the ring in this way. So let me show you where the exit is. Right there is the hole. And right there is where it came through. So I remember sitting down and the guy had the gloves on and the huge needle, Jesus, limb of God, just shoved it. <gasps> never, ever, ever. To that point, never, ever, ever have I even felt that, that kind of pain before. It was excruciating, but I was young. Yo, when you're young, you have a lot more tolerance to things. Wow. Thinking back, my God, I have a high pain tolerance. If you have a low pain tolerance, you would not do the things that I've done, okay? The way my tongue swelled. And now that I think about it, my mom wasn't there, my friend was there. So did we even need parental authorization? I guess we did it. I'm telling you, it was it was a hot girl decade. It was, wow, very painful, had to eat noodles and whatever. Ugh, the breath was on stank because you can't brush your tongue and I brush my tongue. I don't know about you. You know, people talk about toothbrushes. Do you need to also brush your tongue? I haven't, I'll digress right now. I have an issue with going to the dentist and all they do is shake your teeth. How about the tongue? How about my tongue, madame? Please, take a look at it. I do a great job with brushing my tongue, it's very important. So when I had my tongue pierced, I was very perplexed, very disturbed at the idea that I could not address the tongue buildup, you know, but it's the buildup, it's just very, very built. And I, oh God, mm -hmm. to be a teenager, you know, I don't remember how long that was, but it was some time, cause my friend also got hers done. And the two of us were like, yo man, can you eat yet? Yo man, we you, how's your tongue, yo? It was the stupidest thing ever. But I have more stupid things I'm gonna go over to in this in this count up. But yo, yes, I had a tongue ring girl. And after I had it, so I remember going to job interviews and making sure not to talk with my mouth too much because I didn't want to show the tongue ring. And then when I had the job, specifically, I was a waitress at this restaurant called Ponderosa. And I remember I, <laughs> When I used to work, I would try not to open my mouth too much when I was talking because I didn't want it to show because I felt like I would be fired because it was unprofessional. Or I felt like I'd be asked to take it out. And I was just like, I'm not taking this out. You know how painful this is? I'm not taking it out. And back then, tongue rings were popular. Comment below and let me know if you have ever even heard of this. Did you go through this phase? Did you have friends who went through this phase? It was definitely a phase. I have not seen a person with a tongue ring in maybe 10 years. I mean, I don't, it's not a thing anymore. It was a thing. You understand me? It was a thing, honey. And I was thinking, end of story. So like I alluded to before, number seven is I've had a lot of jobs. In fact, my sister and I counted we, when I was in college, we were like, yo, you've had 20, 21 jobs. What is the problem? Well, the thing is, is I started working at 15, baby, cause I wanted a cell phone and I wanted a car when I was 16 and I had to pay for it. So I started working early and then I just knew that I was a worker. I had filed documents at a healthcare agency. I worked in dietary where you click, you're in the kitchen at a nursing home, baby. I remember I actually had a nursing home. This is so bad. <laughs> I used to fill in for this lady because she had a client and I, oh dear God, this is so, yeah, I don't think that was legal. Mm-mm, because -mm, I was young. I, okay, well, wait, I, I, I believe I was in college or close to college. I've always been a mature young lady. So I used to help this old lady, you know? I remember one time I was like, do I have to take her a bath? Because I can't do that. I can't be giving old folks baths. That, I'm not ready for, you know? But thank God I didn't have to do that. I have worked at Dunkin' Donuts. Oh my gosh, Dunkin' Donuts. I have worked everywhere. I can't even think, honest to God. Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Girl, I've had mad jobs. Whenever you found me, I had a job. Yo, I worked at r and I worked at Aldo. I've worked at Dollar Tree. I Was Dollar Store or Dollar Tree? I've worked, girl, I had a job, okay? Now, money management is a whole different topic, but I had a job. <laughs> I always had a job, you can't ask me, you can't You can't even talk to me that way because I always had a job. Now when it comes to pain again, number eight is that I have two tattoos and I got them when I was a teenager. Girl, I don't remember getting authorization for those either. <laughs> oh my God. So, <laughs> I'm sure you have seen the tattoo on my wrist, Adubia. Okay, that's a middle name. And I got that one first. Now I look at it, I'm like, I should have gotten a different font, but that's okay. And 
it's not like I ever went and got it touched up. It just is what it is. I just got it again. My friend and I were like, yo, let's get a tattoo. I was like, okay, cool. Thank God I got my name and not some foolish boy's name because that would be so stupid. But you've all been there with the foolish boys. Oh dear Lord. When I look back over my life, I just give God all the glory. God, that I'm not stuck in some way, shape or form to these fools because I was also a fool. So if I was, it would be my my fault, probably cloudy, you know? But I just thank God because mm, it could have been, should have been, would have been, you know? But thank God it's not, you understand? And then I have a tattoo in the back of my neck. It is an Adinkra symbol. It is Sankofa, return and get it. But it also means learning from the past. And I got it as a, a remembrance of learning from the past because there was one big part of my past that was both horrific, tragic, embarrassing, all the things. And now I look at it, first of all, I forget I even had a tattoo. I forget unless someone, like if I, if I have my hair in a bun and someone's like, oh, what is that? I'm like, oh, I forgot. It's behind me, first of all. And usually our necks are black <laughs> because like, who's paying attention to you in the back of your neck? You know what I'm saying? So speaking of, I need to exfoliate, but then again, it'll take the tattoo out, but I don't really care. I forget it's there, but when I remember, I'm like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that time when I got this tattoo. Mm -hmm. Comment below and let me know if you have any tattoos, how many you have. And if you have any, it shouldn't have got. Let me know, girl. Now, number nine is that I not diagnosed, but I know that I have a slight speech impediment. Now, the thing about YouTube videos is that on social in general, let's it's live editing. Hello. So if I stumble over my words, I can just edit it and keep moving. You're not going to know. But anyone who knows me that has paid any sort of attention to me while talking has noticed not always just every now and then like, hmm, because what happens is I wouldn't call it a stutter per se, although in my family, I do know of four people that stutter, okay? So it's not a stutter per se, but it's like along those same lines. What happens is I think and talk very quickly. So then when I'm speaking, see, okay, it just happened. Did you hear that? I wanted to say sometimes, but I couldn't get the sometimes out. Did you hear that? I said, I said, that's what happens. I think and I talk very fast. It might be because I'm from Rhode Island and we just talk and move and fast. Or it could just be my personality, I don't know. So when I talk and I would I would notice it was very, very prominent for me when I was working the job I worked when I first came to Houston because I would do a lot of presentations and oh my God. But I learned how to be comfortable talking in public. It kind of happened a second ago, I'm just playing. So I had to speak in front of hundreds of people and I would have to tell myself to talk slowly because why am I rushing? When you're talking over a microphone to a large crowd, you have an echo, especially for the folks in the back. It's important to talk slowly so that they can understand what you're saying, but I talk fast and I think fast. So I would sometimes trip over my words. Like literally it feels like I'm walking and I stumble and I get back up again, literally. And this actually happened to me when I was leading worship one time. I was so embarrassed, but I don't think anyone noticed. I did and I felt so terrible, but I had to remind myself that it's not about me, it's about God. So back to my talking, it's not diagnosed. It's not anything that is interfering with my life. It's not anything that I've called out to a teacher or teachers called out. It's nothing like that, but I know that I have it. It's a speech impediment of some sort. I just, I can't sometimes get words out. And I literally, when I'm saying something and I can't get the word out, because if I'm trying to get it out, it's going to, it's going to fumble. I'll change the word. You may have caught it in videos. You may not have caught it. You may have caught it on IG story. You may not. I know that there are some speech. See, I wanted to say, I know that there are some, and it's also because my accent too. I have a lot of accents. So the accents all combine and then they get me confused. I know that there are some people that have speech impediments, right? That I'm a lot more prominent. Mine isn't that prominent unless you just, you have a high attention to detail. You've noticed it, not a big deal to me, but I can actually feel when I'm gonna say something that it's not gonna come out right. And then I've just taught myself to change the word. If I if I don't change the word, I'm gonna be stuck on trying to say it right and I can't get it out. I'm not lying. Like, And I do believe that it happens more prominently when I'm upset. Yes, when I'm upset and I'm, dear God, yelling and screaming and swearing, you know, it just, uh, it just all comes together. I'm not, I'm not proud, but, it happens, okay? Number 10. Okay, the girl been in them shackles twice. And let me tell you, now, <laughs> I'm laughing now, but it's not a funny matter. <laughs> at all, you know? I am i wouldn't consider myself a friend of the law, you know? It wasn't like I was doing racketeering or like a fel felony behavior, you know, nothing like that. <laughs> but obviously worthy enough to be in them shackles on my hands son, and I couldn't dance. Listen, I was a teenager, you know what I'm saying? I've told this story briefly before in videos. Let's go into it just a smidge here, okay? Great. So 
first time around, my friend was like, girl, let's go over to Apex. Apex is back in the day. Maybe it's like your savers here in Texas. I don't know. Let's go on over to Apex. And what I, she had done this before. She was schooling me and I was a fool to follow her. You see what I'm saying? And now I think about it. She was white or light. She was mixed. But she looked white and I was brown, brown, black. I mean, maybe I just stood out because of that. I don't know. I was wrong though. I was wrong though. Okay. Cause the thing is that she didn't get caught. I did. Oh my goodness. So she's like, yo, let's go over to Apex. You know what I'm saying? First of all, we took the bus over there. We were young. Just truant. Oh dear God. Just a mess. Okay. Took the bus over to Apex. She's like, yo, put on these Reebok class, bring your Reebok classics. What we're going to do is we're going to go try on some new Reebok classics. And then you're going to put on the new pair and put your old pair back in the box and we gonna walk out. And I was like, bet, here we go. You see what I'm saying? So here we go, walking out with these classics on, girl. And <laughs> as we approached the door, honey, the man was like, excuse me, excuse me. Oh my God, terrified. And I thought, this is so bad, but I thought you had to actually walk out the door for it to be theft because I could have been like, I was just trying to feel them out and see, you know, how they feel. Like, what you saying, you know what I'm saying? But I was trying to steal. It was theft. You see what I'm saying? So the guy got me, walked me over to the back room. I mean, heart pounding, all kinds of terror in my body. Shows me the camera of me stealing. I was horrified. Asked for my house address, phone number, called my mom. Had to tell her that I was caught stealing and I was being escorted home. So the police officer put handcuffs on me, walked me out of the room and into the police car. I was like, wow, this is what the backseat of a police car feels like. And the guy's like, you need to learn not to do this again. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I know I was crying. I was hysterical. It was embarrassing. And then they passed by this park that is popular in the area. I was like, oh my God, please don't let anyone see me in this car. And I don't think anyone did. They brought me home. I remember my grandma was there and I was like, don't say anything to grandma. <laughs> I was like, okay. And my mom, bless her heart, she's so patient and sweet and calm. She didn't, I don't remember her yelling at me or beating me. She just was just so disappointed. She's just like, why would you do this? Why would you do this? And that's all I can remember as her response. And I felt so bad, but not bad enough because then I thought it was gonna be cute to steal again from Private Space Mall, honey child. I'm not good at this. I said before, this is terrible because you had them, you have them boosters who do this as, as a job. This is their job. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing. This is not my walk. I, I shouldn't be doing this kind of things, but I tried it again. And that was my last second and last time. And I'm glad because enough was enough. The mall was new. And here I am thinking I'm gonna just go ahead and boost a little something. No, baby. I didn't even leave the store yet either. And the guy was like, excuse me, excuse me. I said, Lord have mercy. Girl, the guy yoked me up. My sister was there. I was trying not to let her know. And then she She's like, what's going on? What are you doing? What's going on? Why are they taking you? And I was like, um, <laughs> honey, I was embarrassed. And it just so happened my mom actually worked at the mall in the parking garage. They walked me down. I was embarrassed. I don't remember what she said after that either, but I was like, yeah, this is not for me. I need to stop. You know, I need to be a better person because this road that I'm going on, it's not a good road. It's a very cobblestone road and I just can't do it. So those are the 10 random things about your girl. Hopefully you laughed. Comment below if you, if any of it resonates with you or if you have any funny, crazy stories that you want to share and post on internet because I just did it. So maybe it'll free you to just say a little something. As always, I'm glad you're here. Glad you watch my videos. Make sure you watch some more. Give me a thumbs up, girl. And make sure you subscribe. I'll talk to you later in the next video. Bye.